Good morning. It's Saturday, April 20th, 2024. It is sunny at the moment, but it looks like clouds are rolling in from the west, uh, and it's a cool morning. There is talk of rain on Monday, and I certainly hope that's true. We can always use more rain. Just a few announcements for the day. Reminder of worship services tomorrow, 8.30 at 1st and 10.30 at St. Paul's. Both services live streamed on the parish Facebook page, First and St. Paul Lutheran Churches. Reminder of visitation on Sunday afternoon into the evening for Pastor Bruce Hansen from 4 to 7 p.m. Be at St. John's Lutheran Church in Guttenberg. And funeral services for Pastor Hansen will be Monday morning at 11 o'clock at St. John's. Do continue to keep the Hansen family in your prayers. I think those are the announcements I'm going to touch on for today. Um, I had a curious little conversation yesterday morning. We were on our way out to the cemetery and I was riding with the funeral director who apparently hadn't been uh, in Garnavillo or perhaps hadn't noticed before, but as we were making the turn to go to the cemetery, he asked uh, what that brick church was, uh, pointing to St. Peter's. And I said, well, that's St. Peter's Lutheran. And he said, well, what, what uh, denomination is that? And I said, ELCA. And he was a little nonplussed. He says, there's two in this town? And I said, yes, there is. And he says, well, what's the story behind that? And to be honest, I have no clue. When people ask, I always say, well, about 100 years ago, somebody said something to someone, and they went two blocks down the street and built a church. But literally, I have no idea what the conflict was, and most people I've talked to can't really tell me either. But that's neither here nor there. What I think is important is that we, with St. Peter's and Peace and First, have come to the realization that doing ministry in the traditional way we're used to doing it is going to have to grow and change. There is a shortage of pastors in the ELCA. There are more congregations who are in a position of not being able to afford a full-time pastor on their own. And so they have to look at new situations and new combinations. And that's what we've been doing in Garnavillo and at McGregor and in Clayton. We've been looking at ways in which we, the four congregations, can work together, perhaps call pastors together, but share ministry so that each one of our individual congregations can maintain its identity and still do ministry in Clayton County. We're also thinking now offering an invitation to Zion and Clayton Center as they are now without a pastor as well. It's going to be an ongoing challenge for us because it's going to take time, it's going to take some compromise, it's going to take being serious about just exactly what is the ministry of each congregation and how can we best fulfill it. What I do know is that we can't let whatever has happened in the past dictate what we're going to be doing in the future. We can't undo those things that took place 100 years ago, 50 years ago, 10 years ago. Those events are behind us, and whatever their reasons were and whatever harm they may have done, those are the things we simply have to let go of. And in one way or another, I think we need to forgive one another for all of the times and places and circumstances where we could have worked together and we failed to do so. And we were uncharitable towards each other. I think there's a good feeling on the steering committee that's working very hard to move forward on this. I think it's something that we can and should do. And what that future will look like, I can't honestly tell you. We're at the very beginning of the process. We have been discussing of sharing a joint float in the 4th of July parade this year. Uh, we're looking forward to doing some things with that that will begin to emphasize our partnership. We're also talking about holding a joint worship service between the four congregations this coming September uh, and then have a shared potluck at that time. And then we'll be looking at other things, more concrete and more forward-looking. But as I said, we're at a starting point. And I think it's a good and great opportunity for us to look at what we're doing. I'm reminded of the first verse of Psalm 133. Behold how good and pleasant it is when brothers dwell in oneness. It is a good and pleasant thing for us as brothers and sisters in Christ to dwell in a unity that can give glory to God, serve the gospel, 
and maintain the ongoing ministry of our congregations. I certainly want to be a part of that, and I hope you do too. Garnavillo, McGregor, Clayton, and Clayton Center are great little communities with a great heritage, and we have a lot to offer still, and we can move forward together. We have a great opportunity, folks. I hope we can take it. Let's pray. Holy Spirit, guide and direct us as we seek to work together as your people here in Garnavillo and McGregor, Clayton and Clayton Center. Help us to set aside those things that got in the way in the past and look at the things that we have uniquely together that we can do together. We continue to pray for the Hanson family. We ask your prayers for healing there. Comfort and console them. Let your healing presence be with all those we know to be sick and in hospital. And give us tomorrow if it be your pleasure. We ask it all in your name. Amen. Well, tomorrow being Sunday, obviously I won't be putting out a devotional, a video. So, But I'll see you again on Monday. And until then, goodbye now.